Well, we've done triple A, double A, high A, and just when you thought there were no A's left, there's a low A as well. And, well, let's just get straight into it. We start off with SRP Park, home to the Augusta Green Jackets. It's slightly strange that they reference another sport in the team's name, but I guess baseball and golf aren't in direct competition. And the Masters is of course what Augusta is most well known for. But this stadium isn't in Augusta technically. It's actually across the river from it in North Augusta, South Carolina. So with a strong wind, the batter could legitimately say, I'm gonna hit you all the way to Georgia. Provided they are talking about the state, not the country. Five County Stadium, home to the Carolina Mudcats. Firstly, they really missed a trick with the team's name. I know that minor league baseball seems to like the two-worded names, and being located right next to a sewage treatment plant, they should have been called the Carolina Sewer Rats. That would have really brought the fans out. The sewage plant mightn't be ideal, but a nice touch is the water tower that has been painted to look like a baseball. Joseph P. Riley Jr. Park home to the Charleston River Dogs. Not just the River Dogs though, they also share the stadium with the Citadel Bulldogs, whose campus is nearby. There's the football stadium over there. It appropriately looks like a citadel. The ballpark looks pretty good. It's your classic brick exterior and green roof setup. But there's also this Tudor inspired tower thing. Not sure what that's about, but it's kind of cool. Segra Park, home to the Columbia Fireflies. Firstly, the grand front entrance looks quite impressive. Certainly a better site than what previously occupied the site. An abandoned mental hospital. And from the field you can see some of the old buildings that belong to the hospital. Speaking of the field, it has a very odd shape. The outfield wall just juts out in the center. Arthur W. Purdue Stadium, home to the Delmarva Shorebirds. It is seemingly situated out in the sticks, but don't be fooled, it's only a hop, skip and jump away from Delaware, aka the Big Smoke. It has undergone a major redevelopment since this shot was taken, and it now looks considerably better. Granger Stadium, home to the Down East Wood Ducks. It's quite a historic stadium and it certainly looks it, especially the lighting on top of the roof. It looks like it's from the 40s or something, but it does give the ballpark a bit of character. And once again, the nearby water tower is getting involved, except this time it has the team's logo on it. Segra Stadium, home to the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. We're right back into the 21st century with this one. You can just tell that it's brand spanking new by the bright shade of the concrete. It is a highly praised ballpark and for good reason. It not only looks fantastic with its stunning brick exterior, and just like Segra Park, it has quite a grand entrance, but also apparently the food game is on point as well, including helmet nachos, which I think Neil deGrasse Tyson once said was among mankind's greatest achievements. Fred Nats Ballpark home to the Fredericksburg Nationals. This ballpark is so new that it hasn't opened yet. Well, not officially. But by the time this video goes live, it, it would have opened, so forget about that last part. But it was ready for the 2020 season, which, as we know, uh, it didn't eventuate. The place looks incredible, and the view from your seat is quite pleasant. A beautiful forest. Unlike the trees, the field is artificial. Atrium Health Ballpark, home to the Canapolis Cannonballers. It's yet another brand new stadium, although it was built on the site of the old Intimidator Stadium. The design is partially inspired by the city's industrial past, particularly the exterior, which looks like a textile mill, and looks fantastic. Another excellent ballpark has been born. 
Bank of James Stadium, home to the Lynchburg Hillcats. It is one of the oldest minor league baseball stadiums going round, having opened in 1940. Although it doesn't particularly look that old, because it has been renovated many times as you might expect. It is actually so close to the nearby football stadium that they share the clubhouse facilities with it. Ticketreturn.com Field at Pelicans Ballpark Wow, that name really rolls right off the tongue. Anyway, it's home to the Myrtle Beach Pelicans. The ballpark is highly praised and located in a prime location, right near Broadway at the beach, an entertainment complex that is famous apparently. The ballpark itself looks great, I haven't got a bad word to say about it, other than its name. But it didn't choose its name, so I won't hold that against it. Haley Toyota Field at Salem Memorial Ballpark Ah, oh, man, just have one name, please. It's home to the Salem Red Sox. There's no covered seating to speak of at this ballpark, but the view of the Blue Ridge Mountains more than makes up for it. An interesting little extra is that just outside the stadium is a scaled down replica of Fenway Park. See? Look at that! It looks exactly the same. Lecombe Park, home to the Bradentown Marauders. It was built way back in 1923, making it the third oldest stadium used by a major league team, because the Pittsburgh Pirates use it for spring training the first of many spring training facilities in this division, cause Florida and that. The ballpark has an exterior built in the Florida Spanish mission style, which looks superb, and the palm trees in right field are a nice touch too. Baycare Ballpark, home to the Clearwater Threshers. It's so far so good in Florida, I really like this one as well. They've also been inspired by Spanish architecture. But this time it's done in the Spanish Mediterranean style. And it too has plenty of palm trees around the ballpark. Radiology Associates Field at Jackie Robinson Ballpark. Ah, f me. I'm getting sick of these people naming the field and the ballpark separately. It's a cop out. They want the sponsorship money, but they also want it to be named after Jackie Robinson. Anyway, it's home to the Daytona Tortugas. Hmm, well, it's an interesting location, surrounded on all sides by the Halifax River. But it is one of the most unusual looking ballparks in minor league baseball. However, it is over 100 years old, and it has been hit hard by hurricanes over the years. So I'll cut it some slack. TD Ballpark, home to the Dunedin Blue Jays, and of course the Toronto Blue Jays, who have been using this ballpark for spring training since their inception, and will be playing some regular season games here in 2021. It was lacking in certain basic amenities up until 2020, when it was renovated. The exterior now has a Florida beach house look to it, that's very pleasing on the eye. Hammond Stadium, home to the Fort Myers Mighty Muscles. I like how the Floridian ballpark designers aren't afraid to go for something out of left field. No pun intended. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? Of course the pun was intended. This time they went for a very elegant looking design, with a mostly white facade that was inspired by Churchill Downs, the famous horse racing venue. On the inside though, it's a lot less interesting. Not bad or anything, it's just hard to top that grand entrance. Roger Dean Stadium, home to the Jupiter Hammerheads and the Palm Beach Cardinals. I think that's the first one we've had where it's shared by two competing teams. It hosts two rookie teams as well. It's more of a typical design than the last one, with a green roof and hits of brick on the facade. It's simple, but once again very easy on the eye. Joker Marchant Stadium, or Marchand, I don't know, home to the Lakeland Flying Tigers. 
That is one scary prospect if tigers could fly. We're back to the faux Spanish architecture and plethora of palm trees that Florida's ballparks are known for. This is the spring training home of the Detroit Tigers, who have been in Lakeland for 85 years. A record. Just think of that. When they first started coming here, Detroit was a prosperous city. The interior has a bit of everything. A fairly normal grandstand, a rather ugly stand that's been plonked next to it, and a well manicured grass berm. Clover Park, home to the St. Lucie Mets. It was traditionally known as Tradition Field, but you know what they say Tradition. Schmerstition. So, it's Clover Park now. The ballpark was recently renovated for the 2020 season. It now looks a lot more. uh. metish? There's a lot more blue and orange on the exterior. And why not? It's a good color combination in my view. George M. Steinbrenner Field, home to the Tampa t What? Oh, Tarpons. The Tampa Tarpons. This one is a big one, relatively speaking. And that is largely due to it being the springtime home of the Yankees. After all, it is named after a former Yankees owner. The design does vaguely resemble Yankee Stadium. If you squint very hard. So hard that you become light-headed. But I do really like it. Chuck Chansey Park, home to the Fresno Grizzlies. This is another big boy. Again, relatively speaking. It's very rare to have a second tier of seating in single A baseball. And it has a pretty nice exterior particularly on the street front side. And it has a live action merry-go-round with real horses. The one department where it's lacking is the view. Although if you're sitting in the right spot, on the right, you get a decent view of the Fresno skyline. San Manuel Stadium, home to the Inland Empire 66ers. Oddly enough, that's two stadiums in a row named after Indian casinos. Once again, it's got a Spanish-inspired exterior. Why not? It looks great. Other than that, it's a fairly simple stadium with a fairly decent view. I like how these trees look like they're encroaching onto the field. Not only does it provide shade, but... I don't know, it gives it a certain feel. A tree feel. Lake Elsinore Diamond, home to the Lake Elsinore Storm. Not named after a casino, but that lake over there. Well, actually, it's probably named after the city, which in turn is named after the lake. But that's irrelevant. This ballpark is quite aesthetically pleasing. It has one of those brick clock towers that you see at quite a few ballparks. The red seats and the green roof go well together. And while there's no outfield seating, why would you even want to turn your back on this stunning view of the mountains? John Thurman Field, home to the Modesto Nuts. Appropriately, it's quite the modest stadium, yet it's also fairly unique. For starters, it backs onto a golf course. So close that it wouldn't be out of the question that a golf ball ends up on the field during the game. If some idiot mistakes a driver for a putter. It is quite old, but it was extensively renovated in the 90s. Although how extensive can you be, there isn't that much to renovate. Lone Mart Field, home to the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. A very cool sounding name for a city, I have to say. But it does also sound like a nickname for a Mexican mental hospital or something. It's quite strange, you see this four field in one configuration quite often, but it normally doesn't include a proper stadium. I love the way they've lined the outfield perimeter with trees. It blocks off the view of the neighboring buildings, and coupled with the San Gabriel Mountains in the distance, you could be mistaken for thinking you were in the wilderness. You would probably have to be high, but still. Excite Ballpark, home to the San Jose Giants. With a name like that, you'd expect it to be exciting. And you better believe it isn't really. But it's not too bad. It was built at a very exciting time in the world's history. Exciting in a bad way though, it was 1942, 
in the midst of World War II. It was actually a fairly unique design back then, being made mostly from reinforced concrete. Banner Island Ballpark, home to the Stockton Ports. Despite the name, it's not located on an island, although once upon a time it was. Not the stadium, it's fairly new. The land was once an island, is what I'm trying to say. There is at least some water nearby, and the Stockton Arena, that somewhat matches the ballpark's design. Speaking of which, it looks very clean and modern, and from the outside it maintains a surprisingly low profile. Valley Strong Ballpark, home to the Vesalia Rawhide. We end on one of the more peculiar designs going round. I think I know what's going on here. It probably started out back in the day as just a typical baseball diamond that you might find anywhere. Then it's slowly but surely built into a stadium so to speak. But they didn't have any room behind home plate so they built the additional uh, amenities over here. Another peculiar detail is that the exterior isn't done up in the classical baseball style or Spanish mission or anything like that. They appear to have been inspired by an inner city skate park. Very strange. There is actually a skate park within feet of the field, I only just noticed that. Is that a barn? Gee whiz, this ballpark's got it all. And those were the low A baseball stadiums. Let us know if there are any other baseball leagues you'd like us to make a video of. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.